Hi, welcome to Comprehension Day 2 for our story, Hold the Flag High. If you have not listened to the story all the way through, you need to stop me right here and go back into your Savas Realize account and listen to the story all, all the way through before we begin our first read questions today, okay? But if you have listened to the story, we can continue uh, with our questions. And we're going to start with this passage that says, Long before the sun rose, the men of the 54th awoke to prepare for battle. They checked and rechecked their rifles, making sure the flints were dry and the bayonets sharped and shined. Ned worked hard, filling the canteens with water. After a breakfast of hardtack and coffee, each soldier had his name pinned onto the back of his uniform. This way, soldiers who did not survive the battle could be identified. Soldiers who could help, who could write, helped those who couldn't. And our question is, what happened first? Did Ned fill the canteens first or did the soldiers eat breakfast first? And what clue words let us know what happened first? So let's go back to the passage and see if we can figure out what happened first. It says right here, Ned worked hard filling the canteens with water. Do you see it right here? And then it says, after a breakfast of hardtack and coffee, each soldier had his name pinned onto the back of his uniform. So what happened first? Filling the canteens with water or breakfast? Well, if you said filling the canteens with water, you would be correct. Because I can definitely see there it is right before breakfast. Are there any other clue words that let me know that it happened pretty early before breakfast? Ah, look at the very start of this paragraph, right? It says long before the sun rose. The men were up checking their rifles and Ned was filling the canteen. So those long before the sun rose lets me know what order things happened in. Uh, that they got up early, checked on their uh, rifles, Ned filled the canteens and then they had breakfast. Okay, uh, so you can see it uh, as it's happening. Right. You can see it as it's happening. Uh, Let's see, we can't erase that a little better. We can see it as it's happening uh, in the passage with these clue words uh, long before the sun rose, right? Ooh, that works better. All right, let's keep going. But when Colonel Shaw dismounted, Ned noticed his fa pale face was nearly as white as his stallion. Ned wondered, could he be scared too? Maybe Shaw was a bit afraid. He had already been wounded in battle once, but his speech to his troops betrayed no fears. Shaw fired up his men for battle. The 54th had been picked to lead the charge against Fort Wagner, the Confederate outpost guarding Charleston. Chest swollen with pride, these soldiers could hardly wait. They would gladly follow Shaw to the ends of the earth, eager to prove their courage under fire. So what effect does Shaw's speech have on the men? What does this effect of his speech? Well, it says they're what? It says, oh, but his speech betrayed no fear. Shaw fired up. Do you see those words right there? Fired up. Shaw fired up his men for battle. So it got them ready, right? Uh, it did get them ready. Let's see. What other questions can we answer from this passage? Let's see. What is the main idea of this part of the passage? Are the men nervous? Huh? Are the men nervous? Hmm. Let's see. It says, when Colonel Shaw dismounted, Ned noticed his pale face was nearly as white as his stallion. Do you think those men are nervous? I think so, too. I think pale face lets you know that they're nervous. They're under tension. Do you know what tension is? Well, tension is a synonym for nervousness. The men are nervous. Uh, and we know that because it gives us clues in the passage and we can feel their tension uh, up until he gives them the speech, right? Because Ned is watching. Could he be scared 
to. Do you see this word to? It means also. So Ned has got some fear, right? He's nervous. He's tense. Uh, and he's wondering if other people around him are tense and nervous too. And that lets us know the men are feeling that tension. So what does tension mean? Tension means nervousness, right? And the main part of this passage is it's the men being nervous before the battle. And what lets us know that the men are feeling that tension? They're watching the commander and they're wondering if he is nervous like they are. Sarge, I don't know what it'd be like when the Rebs start shooting. I'm feeling scared and, and he stuttered. And what if I get lost? Son, you just play that drum and remember what we're fighting for. Old Glory will lead the way. Old Glory, Ned asked. Sure, son, keep your eyes on the flag, said Carney. Like hundreds before us and thousands after, just follow those stars and stripes and you can't go wrong. Why does Sergeant Carney talk to Ned about the flag bearer? And is the flag bearing job an important one? How do we know? Well, why does Ned need Carney to remind him about the flag. Well, Ned's nervous, isn't he? Scared. It even says so. He tells him out loud, I'm feeling scared and what if I get lost? Uh, and Sergeant Carney's advice is follow the flag. You have to remember the battles back then were very loud and very, you know, filled with that gun smoke and, and it, it was a real danger that you could get lost and end up separated. Uh, from your troops. And so the idea is you would follow the flag bearer, the person who knew where they were going or were listening to the orders uh, that they were played on the drums, right? To know to go forward or backward. Uh, and so you could follow the flag. So was a flag bearing a very important job on the battlefield? Absolutely it was. Uh, the flag bearer's job was the one that kept the troops going in the right direction, kept the unit together. And so that's an extremely important job. And we know it uh, in the story. It says like hundreds before us and thousands after. Just follow those stars and stripes and you can't go wrong. So like every other soldier uh, in battle, you follow the flag to know which way to go. That's how important a job it was. All right, guys, good job. Those were our first three questions for Hold the Flag High. Uh, you should really pay attention to some of these questions in case you see ones like them on a test at the end of the week, okay? Good luck to you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.